G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. This is so, like, not requested, but I've seen it enough that I thought, you know what, I'm about to go and do it, so let me record this video. I'm also a little tired. <laughs> I've been back from holidays all of not even a week, and I'm already exhausted. Um, anyway, it's gonna be lots of computers. This is literally only for the people who have asked, how do you do those little holiday photo strips for my five-year journal? Such a specific video. So I thought I'd just make it anyway. Stick around if that's something you're curious about. Basically, it's a little bit of collaging of photos in Photoshop, but a lot of it is gonna be particular to the type of software you have, like the phone you have, how you get your camera, your photos from your phone, or your camera to your computer, like all of that technical stuff, not really gonna go into, it's just going, I and mean, I'll show you how I do it, but I'm not gonna go into like how it would work for everybody. If you've got an iPhone and a MacBook and Photoshop, that's probably gonna be the best. <laughs> if not, good luck to you on your search for what would be a sufficient replacement for those things. Anyway, alternative, whatever. Let's get into it because the computer stresses me out and I don't even know how this is going to go, but I'm going to do a screen recording. <laughs> All right, the first thing I want to do is open Photoshop, which now I've got to search for because apparently it's not here. There we go. Photoshop. And then I'm going to go to my desktop because I have a folder here that's called, you know what? not going to do that. I'm going to do this in Photoshop first. I get so nervous because you can see like all the things happening on the screen and not that there's anything you can't see, but in the back of my head there is. There's like, like ugly photos of me or <laughs> what you're about to see anyway. <laughs> all right, Photoshop, new. We have to make a new file. So we're going to go up the top here, press new or command N if you're on a MacBook. I've got the dimensions here. I'm doing the little bar in the five-year journal. It's really small, actually. So we have to do a custom size for that. I'm gonna go to centimeters. The width is 9.6. So I'll put, this is the exact width. I've done 10, in, I've done 10 centimeters wide before. I've done 9.5 centimeters wide before. Today, I'm gonna give you exactly the width. And the height is 2.6. So if you've got that set to centimeters, that's all great. Resolution 300 uh, just works the best for print, even though you're gonna print really small and like there'll be some, I don't know if it's called downsampling or like the file will reduce, it, whatever, it'll work. <laughs> oh yeah, if you've got a printer, that'd help too because I couldn't imagine trying to get this printed anywhere else. So I use my home printer, but uh, everything else looks fine. I don't mess with the color modes and the bits and everything. Let's just go create. Now you'll see a little white bar pop up like this, and this is your canvas to work on. This is your little spread. It is actually really, really tiny, so you won't be able to fit a ton on there if you're doing it for your five-year journal, but this would work with any size. Like, I actually do the exact same process for my traveler's notebook. I think it's just 11 centimeters by 21 centimeters. So when I do my photo journals, I collage exactly the same way. I can just fit a lot more in. That's why I have those photo journals. Now I'm gonna to go to the desktop because that's where my folder is with my photos and I've called it Oz22 Photos. This isn't, oh, now I'm gonna to toggle with these stupid screens. I want the screen in front so I can drag and drop. There we go. This is not any particular day, I don't think. I think this was just one of the photo dumps I did on Instagram, but I've got a bunch of pictures in here that I think would work well to show you some of the different techniques that I use. Uh, to collage everything together. So you can see I've got 12 images here. I don't know if I'll make all 12 fit on there. I'm actually gonna view them as a gallery. No, icons. I like icons because I can see the actual photo that I wanna pull in. And some have less information in it than others, like this packet of twisties. Like I don't need the whole photo of that, but there are some that I want the whole photo of. Like I want that of my sister. I want that one of me with the hen's uh, glasses on. This is of Stella, Stella and I, and then this one and this one. I think these are all good kind of full photos. When you drag and drop them on a Mac and in Photoshop, um, they'll kind of snap to the right size uh, of the canvas. So that's pretty good. I'm just gonna hit return or enter, or you can go up here and click this little um, check mark that places the images on. You can see down in this right-hand corner here, these are all different layers. So when you want to switch between layers, you can just click that and drag, whatever. I always have these show transform controls on because that means I can uh, see these little, this little bounding box thing. I think that's what that means. But I should have prefaced this. I taught myself Photoshop, so <laughs> this could all be wrong. 
<laughs> it's just what I do though. Um, anyway, so this image, I'm just going to snap that over here because that looks fine. I'm going to put this over here. You'll quickly start to see. Um, I don't know if, if you can turn snapping on or whatever. Maybe it's in, is it in layer? I'm not quite sure, but I like the snapping on because it, mm, yeah, snap. I think it's in view there, snap. Um, I believe it's what makes these things kind of snap together with those pink lines. Can you see how it kind of registers it side by side and makes sure you can find the center and everything? It's just much easier. So I'm not going to be able to fit everything in there, which means I need to shorten or like reduce the size of some of these. This is going to snap it down. If that pink line is halfway, this is going to snap it down in half. So I'll do that. It's technically a quarter of the size that it was. Um, but I just say half because it's half the height. And I don't need that to be a full photo, that one. Even this one here with Stella, um, I want it in there, but I would probably just make that a half as well. And I'm just dragging them on top of each other. It really is collage. It's like you were doing it manually with actual photos, but you're just dragging it with your mouse. So I'm going to drag this one. I actually want to see more of my sister and the children. Now, can you see when I drag that up? You can see a little, I'm pointing at the screen like you can see it here. You press return so you can see what's happening. See, this part of the photo got covered, but this one is on top. That's because these layers, if you look down in this right hand corner down here, these layers are all in a different order. So they're stacked on top of each other. Whichever layer is at the top here, this one, that's the top layer. This is going to be in front of everything. If you think of them as all stacked pancakes, that's the top pancake. Now these pancakes are out of order. So what I want to do is I want to send this photo. So I'm just going to click on it. It already registers there. I want to send this to the back. So I'm going to drag that layer down, just using my mouse, drag it down to the bottom. And that way it's behind those. Can you see how now it's behind everything? And that way, instead of having to crop it, I can just shove it behind there until I see there my sister pop out. And that way it it's easier to kind of squish them together and make more space. So what really I mess, mess with a lot in this is layers and which layer is at the front, which layer is at the back. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Or like sometimes here, for this for instance, I don't need all this extra room on this part of the photo. So I want to, I want to cut that off. So what I'm going to do is go up to this little the rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to drag it over the side of the photo that I want to cut off. I'm going to press delete, but what you'll see is this is not a, um, this is not a rasterized image at this point. So it's a smart object, which I don't really know what all that means to explain it. I kind of know how it works, but I don't really know what to tell you about it. <laughs> um, I'm just going to press okay. This will rasterize the image, which means once it's I pressed okay, I can press, oh, sorry. I actually have to go down to the layer and right click it and go to rasterize layer. There we go. Now I can press delete and I can get rid of that part. Once it's gone, it's gone. I don't bother with masks or anything because it's not that serious. But I'm going to get my little select tool again. You can just press V if you want to bring that mouse back. But there I've taken off that edge and now I can shove that edge over the side and see how I've cropped that in as well. I actually don't even need the other side. The shortcut for this one is just the letter M, the marquee tool. We'll get that marquee tool and I'll cut this side off as well. There we go, delete, so I pressed M so I could get this back again. The shortcut for the mouse is V, so I just press V and that will bring the mouse back. Otherwise, all of these are your tools up here. You can actually just go and click them. But if you learn the shortcuts, it's much quicker, especially if you're doing a whole holiday, you're doing like 16 of these in a row. It's good to be efficient. Same thing with this. I actually like this full photo, but it's not going to show once it's printed. It's going to be way too small. So I'm just going to need to blow Stella up a little bit. And again, see how that layer is in front of everything else. Also, top tip, when you're sizing everything, imagine you're going to cut the tiniest bit off the top and the tiniest bit off the bottom. Even though this is the exact size, um, sometimes printers print a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, and you are going to want to trim it off so that there's no white border, if that's what you want. If you want a white border... I mean, it'd make the photos really, really tiny at that point. Um, but yeah, just leave yourself a little trim space. We don't need a bleed, but just a little trim space. Here, I want this photo behind again, because this one's cropped pretty well. So I'm going to go, this is selected. I'm going to go over to the layers and drag this one right to the back. There we go. And now I can shove that one over 
right there. And I'll make a bit of a feature of that photo, I don't mind. And now this one, that looks pretty good there. I want that full photo, even though it's technically just half of us. <laughs> Do you know what, maybe it makes more sense to have it here, and I can have this one over here. This will fill up the rest of that space. There we go. So those are a bunch of photos that I wanted to keep kind of the full photo in, because I don't know, maybe there's lots of people in there, maybe there's a bit of a scene going on. It's all gonna be relevant to what you wanna see as your memories, right? And like I said, this is not really one I would make, but I wanted to do it quickly so I could show you before I start doing the whole process, because it's too hard to explain when my head is like not in it properly. Anyway, I'm gonna place this glass. I want this glass, I wanna show you one of the things that I do if I just want the, the thing in the image. This is gonna be a little bit difficult, I think, though. So. Once it's placed down there, I'm gonna go over to this uh, magic wand, and there's an object, object selection tool here. You can either press select subject, it might do a good job of it. That's actually pretty good. Um, if you wanna get rid of something, you can hold down option, and try and trace around the thing that you wanna get rid of just loosely, because I want to tell the computer I don't want that in the image. There you go, it did a much better job. See how it's just selected the glass? What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna press copy and paste. You can do this manually by going up to edit, copy, and then edit, paste. And then if we get our little mouse back, now we have that glass floating around. I want to delete this photo because I don't need it. You'll see the bounding box of the glass though, like it doesn't actually hit that straw. And it, for some reason, there's a whole lot of extra space around the edge here. So sometimes I'll just get my little marquee tool and I'll just delete any extra little information that might be in there. Cause it might've picked up on a speck of dust that's the same color as the lemon or something. And it just wants to keep it. So I just delete anything around there. You can do the same thing with the eraser tool, this little eraser tool down here. You can kind of erase around it. I can't really see it because there's a lot of information in the backgrounds, but you can see now that glass is independent of everything else. It also doesn't really stand out a lot. So what I might do is I might find a better place for it, uh, you know, in front of a photo that's darker, so it might stand out. Or I go over to my layer. You can see this is now called layer one. I'm gonna double click it, go right down the bottom to drop shadow. And I'll fuss about with, if you actually click on the bar here, um, I'll fuss about with the opacity. This will put a really dark shadow on it. Can you kind of see the shadow that's popping out here? I'll make it bigger. I'll make the shadow bigger. There you go. Size. So you can really see what's happening. I bring down the spread because um, I like it to be a really soft shadow, but it also really works to have a hard shadow. This is a pretty big one, but <laughs> just so you can see. Um, the distance is how offset you want it. So you can move the shadow away. You can bring the shadow forward and closer. I like to move it a little bit away. And the angle, you can keep it around here, 120. I actually like the shadow to be off to the bottom right of the image. I don't know why, but it's the way that I draw, so it's kind of the way that I like it here too. So this is a very dramatic example. When you play with the opacity, you can see you can really intensify it, you can soften it. This blend mode is called normal, but if you wanted to experiment with other blend modes, you can come down here and see what happens. It doesn't really show well with black, but if I take a purple, for example. I'll click this. Can you see our shadows turn purple? Now if I go into opacity, put it up really high, and I go into this blend mode, you'll start to see what happens when I fuss with all the different blend modes. Multiply is just kind of darkening everything behind it with the purple, or we could do a linear burn. That's even more intense. We could do a vivid light. Can you see how that's kind of lit up everything purple behind it. So all these blend modes are really good to play with. Saturation, color, it'll help to pop it out if you really want to, uh, you know, get creative with it. I typically always just stick with black. I keep it pretty opaque. I keep the size pretty small. Oh, I want normal. I either want normal or multiply or darken. I'll go normal. I don't want it too far away. I want it just slightly offset with not a lot of a hard edge, just so it's enough to pop it out a little bit. There we go. It's a lot of fussing. 
When I'm happy with it, I'll press OK. And can you see how that slightly stands out more? It even looks like, like a little sticker, like you've placed it on top. You can do that with anything. It doesn't have to be a glass. You can do it with another photo if you wanted to put another photo on top. I'll show you with another photo. And the best part is if you've already done one that you like, you can do it again. Let's just pretend I want this little dolly photo in here. <laughs> I'm going to make it really small. Maybe I want to just put it... I'll use this. Can you see how that arrow makes a little bit of a curve? If you go to the corners, you can... Uh, twist it, kind of rotate it. If you hold shift, it will rotate in like 15 degree increments. So that's how you get a solid 90 degree turn or a 180 degree turn. If you don't hold shift, you can get any angle you want. I don't really mind, I'll do whatever angle. I'll put it, I'll put it here. I like to have things going off the edge as well. I don't need to see the whole image. I pressed okay. Now I'm going to go over to this Layers panel, I'm going to right click on the Glass layer, because we already did that, Shadow, I'm going to go down here where it says Copy Layer Style, I'm going to click that, I'm going to go over to the Dolly photo, I'm going to right click down here on the layer again, and I'm going to press Paste Layer Style. There we go. And I've just applied the same little shadow to the back. If you're finding it's really not sticking out and you just really need to do something else, double click on that layer again and a really solid choice for anything that's got a really clear outline is stroke. Oh, that's the last stroke I did. Very dramatic. <laughs> I'm going to make the color white. That really sticks out. And I'm going to make the size really small. There you go. Press OK. And that will really help it to stick out. But see this, we did a smart like object selection for this. So if you do a stroke for this one, make it white. Okay. You might start to see where, see how that edge is really furry and fuzzy. I'll press okay. I'll take you, zoom you into that. You can see actually there's a little bit of a line here that the smart selection didn't clean up. So that's where if you get the eraser, sometimes it actually helps to erase it with the line on the stroke selection on, uh, you might have to erase some of those extra little bits so you can get it all nice and straight. I prefer to do it with the eraser just because I feel like I've got more control over that. Some people will use the pen tool, some people use this uh, lasso tool. The lasso tool is great if you've got these long straight edges like this. You just click from point to point. I'm just going to make a triangle out there and then press delete. Otherwise, uh, yeah, just don't worry about the stroke. I think the stroke looks like a YouTube thumbnail, so some, I don't really do that, but it is what it is. If you want to turn off any of these effects, like you don't like it, you can just turn it off down there, or you can double click and just deselect it. Press OK. So this little eye thing down here, you can turn on and off if you want to see whether you still like the effect or not. Because in reality, these photos do have some kind of filter on them, but uh, I would probably lighten them up for printing. Printing tends to uh, like saturate and make darker a lot of the photos' colors. So I might make this a little bit smaller. Just so it's between Stella and I on the plane. <laughs> Again, not too close to the bottom, otherwise I'll cut it off. But if I wanted to make this a little brighter, I'll go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast. Move this over here so you can see. And I might just brighten it up a little bit. Sometimes I'll lower the contrast as well. Or I'll boost it. It really depends on the image, to be honest. And because I really like color, <laughs> I might also go into hue and saturation. You can get really particular in all of this, like going down each different channel of color, but the master does a pretty good job of everything. If you just want it rich, make everything a little bit richer. Also, if you're looking to kind of harmonize a lot of photos uh, or like you've got a certain color palette that you work with and you're familiar with Photoshop, I sometimes think it's nice to like, I'll drop the hue uh, down into this area. Sometimes I'll make all of my yellows a bit more of an orangey yellow or make my reds a more pinky red or a more orangey red, depending on what I'm feeling like. But you can really fuss around with all the colors and it feels really creative in a way that's not like you know, drawing and painting. I don't love the computer though, so I don't love to be on here for too long. <laughs> like 20 minutes is way too long. <laughs> I'm gonna have to let this go in a second. 
I'm going to zoom out. To zoom, I'm just doing Command plus or Command minus to zoom in and out. I do that a lot just to check that things are going well. Because uh, even though this is small, you can still see it, like especially when you look at it printed in the journal. And yeah, I think that's honestly everything I had to show you. You've got the little border, you've got the drop shadow, that's probably most important for me. The object selection tool, or you can manually select it with the lasso tool. Or you can just erase the background with the eraser if you feel like it. Even with these like modern versions of Photoshop, like even just hovering over that tool will literally give you a little demonstration of what it does. So hopefully you'll never feel too lost. Those are the simple basics of what I do and I really don't do much more than that for these. Mostly just color correcting or adjusting just for fun. So yeah, that's it. I will just show you one more just in case you felt like you didn't have enough photos, like uh, you only have one photo or two photos, it is also just as fun, even though this isn't a great photo to do it with, uh, to fill the entire thing and just have one photo. It'd be a very panoramic view of a photo, but sometimes it's nice to just zoom right in, just like that. I've also at times, especially like in my photo journals, the ones where I do the traveler's notebook size, I'll go over to the text here, and you can just put a layer of text on top. If you really did feel like typing something because you didn't have anything that day, uh, where is... I've got the lorem ipsum text. I'm going to press yes, but I need to go to my text box. Here it is. I like white text as well. <laughs> Make it bold. Make it small. Yeah, maybe you just want a text, a text block. Just for something extra. Totally up to you. Um, just remember to keep a little bit of extra around the edge for printing. I'm just gonna delete the last things that we did. Now, everything here is all good, but you probably wanna print a bunch of them at a time, I'm guessing. So, what I would do, sorry, phone call. <laughs> what I would have to call my sister back. Ironic that I'm looking at a photo of her. Um, what I would do next is go up to, you wanna select everything, right? And you want just this, you only want this little bit. I'm gonna press uh, layer. Sorry, I've memorized all the keys for this, so I forget where the actual things are sometimes. Um, flatten image, and then I'm gonna to go to, uh, uh, where's select all? Edit. Oh, select, <laughs> it's literally a whole thing. Select all, I'm gonna to go to edit copy. And now I need to paste it onto the page that I want to print. Because if I just print this, I think it'd be a waste of like however much paper I had. So I'm going to go to File, New. This time I'm going to use a letter page. This one here, 8.5 by 11. I just want a blank document, Create. You want the resolution to be 300. Remember, you created this in 300, so you want whatever your next thing to be is 300 as well. Sometimes that's where people get tripped up, especially if they're pulling photos from the internet. Sometimes... Uh, that creates a bit of a problem. So just make sure it's 300, press OK. And then we want to go to Edit, Paste. Now this is a US letter size paper and this is what this is going to print like. This is how small it is. So you can fit a ton of these on here. I'll just show you um, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, you can get 20 days worth of little holiday collage strips into one single sheet. So it's a really effective way to get a lot of information in there. It takes a while to do 20 days, but I have done it, um, and I thought it was very worth it at the end. And yeah, you can just have them really close to each other. You can leave a gap if you want, but you're going to end up trimming off a little bit in the edges anyway. I have a little paper trimmer, which makes it easier, but you can just cut them with scissors if you don't have that. I print on glossy sticker photo paper or matte photo sticker paper. Either way, I don't have to fuss about with glue and it keeps it quite thin. So, and all the edges get stuck down because it's adhesive on the back. And yeah, the better quality paper you have is actually going to make more of a difference than the quality printer. Although having a good quality printer helps as well. Mine is a Canon MX922 printer, which I've had for literally ever, and I love it. And I've used other paper brands in the past. The best paper I ever found, which uh, came from the UK, was Chiltern Wove Matte 
adhesive photo paper. I was gifted a bunch of that years ago and um, I bought bunches afterwards, but now I can't find anywhere to buy them. So if you have access to that, that's the best. Otherwise, I've been using a new one called Koala Brand from, I don't know if it's called Koala Brand, but there's a koala on it from Amazon. I'll try and link anything you might need in the description box below. Thanks for sticking around. I know it was a, it's a hectic video. Do you see how stressed the computer makes me? <laughs> it's so much. Anyway, um, that is how I do it. And then I would just print them off, cut them out, stick them in. I'll put some, uh, I'll put some little overlay footage somewhere so you can see what we've been talking about this whole time. But this is just a video for people who have asked in the past, asked in the past, uh, how do you do that? This is how I do it. And this is also what I do for my photo journals as well, just on a much bigger scale. And yeah, I don't, the photo journal ones is just like any photos, I don't really care, but these ones I really try to pack in a whole selection of what happened in a day. And I've done a double as well, like for one day I've done like two strips and I just made them all across the journal if I had too much, because sometimes you just do too much in one day to get in there. But it is a fun challenge, It is it can be challenging, uh, that's why I, eventually I started cutting out little bits and pieces of photos just so I could pack more in there, like any good collage, right? So have fun with that. Thanks for watching this video. <laughs> I know it's super, super specific <laughs> and boring on the computer. Hopefully you found it fine. I don't think I've ever watched a computer tutorial all the way through. <laughs> I usually just skip right to the part that I need because the, even the look of it, just the look of the screen after too long gets me really agitated. I feel sorry for anyone that works at computers. But if you love it, you love it. Um, okay, I'll see you again soon. I'm actually gonna go and make all of mine for my journal and I'll probably show you that on Instagram. It's like, I'm gonna show you here. <laughs> I did it, uh, I put it on my computer, then I printed it off. That's a Canon MX922 printer, if you're curious to know. I used some glossy adhesive sticker paper and I think it's Koala brand. I'll put it in the description box if I can remember. Um, it's in all my Collage Club description boxes if I do forget, but uh, it is really good quality, especially for printing really fine details. I just wanted to say, because I think I forgot to mention it, the way I get my, cam my photos into Photoshop, I have my iPhone set up so that it automatically uploads it to an iCloud and the photos pop up on my computer. So I actually just drag and drop from the photos library on my computer straight into Photoshop. So that is literally not gonna be of uh, help to anybody. <laughs> but just in case you were wondering how I did that, I just drag and drop them straight from the photos library because the iCloud library is set up, which I don't even know how to explain. So <laughs> I think it did it automatically on my new phone and I tried to undo it at first, but then I thought I would lose all my photos. So it's a whole thing. Now it's just what I do. Here come the sirens. Um, anyway, so then I cut them all up. I use my little Tim Holtz Sizzix. I don't know what that's called. Tonic Studios. It's not Sizzix. Why did I say Sizzix? Because it's it's like a scissor. <laughs> it's like a guillotine. A uh, paper trimmer, like a mini paper trimmer. It's a small one. I really like the size of it. I need to clean mine because I've got so much adhesive kind of gunked up on the blade. But I've had it for years and it's still working wonderfully. Really love that, and uh, it's really great for cutting really small things because you can see I cut off like the teeny tiny trim on some of those that still have like that little bit of an edge because that paper trimmer has that little plate that you can press to keep everything held down. You can get this, the thinnest of little strips uh, sliced off your ephemera, which I really like. And then I uh, peeled them back and put them in my journal. First, I had to lay them out because I had two for some days and I wanted to make sure I didn't get them confused. Uh, so I laid them all out and then once they're all in the right position, I peeled them, the backing off, taped them all in, stuck them all in. This one was the only one I had a trouble with because I didn't realize I already had something on that day, which it is what it is. You just kind of work around it. I made a fold in the thing and just put some paper behind that so it wouldn't actually stick down. And so now it's just a little like flap, which means I can still see the photo underneath and I can still have that full photo strip. So that was my little quick solution to that. There may be other solutions. I just did whatever came to my head at first. I could have just sliced off the edge of that photo and put it somewhere else, but you know, now it's a fun little interactive moment. Uh, once they're all stuck in, I'm getting to the end of that book and you can see I've only got one year left in the five year. Um, right towards the end, that little hump, I had to kind of push in. That's why I love printing on sticker paper because trying to do that with glue gets your hands all gluey and then you ruin your photos and everything. So I feel like sticker paper is the best for this. Anyway, that's the whole process. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again when I see you. Until next time. Bye. For real this time. <laughs>